Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming here. It's nice to have some people in the room, at least. Uh, so yeah, I'm here to talk to you about the concept of developer portals and uh, tell you how not just this community, but every free and open source software community can benefit from having one. Now, the problem is that I could talk about this for days, but we only have a very short time here, so I'm gonna have to fly through it on a very basic level. But if you would like to uh, discuss details with me, you can always just contact me on Twitter or I'm in KD promo channels. Every day I try to be online most of the time. So um, yeah, you can find me there. So, so this whole talk was actually inspired by developers, by you, by people I work with at this company, Racing Labs, where I work as a technical writer, by my friends who are developers, by developers I talk to online in, in different contexts. So in, in these talks with the developers, I realize that they often feel like they're taken for granted, especially by managers. There are quite a few managers who treat their developers as code monkeys and are not really aware of their needs and issues. And it's true that you developers are very smart and self-reliant, but sometimes you also need help. And this type of help that you need is very different from the help that our end users need. And as a community that wants to grow and that wants to attract new developers, it's, it's very important for us to accommodate that. So luckily, in recent years, even some big software companies have started realizing this, you know, that developers actually matter and that they need help. So you can see initiatives like developer relations or DevRel for short. So that's basically a technical community management. It kind of boils down to building a community around a software product and trying to give those developers who use that product um, as many resources as they need so that they can be productive and successful. Um, so it's a, basically a two-way relationship between the developers who give feedback to the company and the company who tries to make their product better based on that feedback. So developer experience is analogous to user experience because as we know, developers are also users. They just use software in a different way. Um, so the things that matter to developers are different than those that matter to, to the end users. Um, so in different studies of de developer behavior and expectations, uh, the results show that documentation influences de developer experience a lot more than many of you may think. Um, for example, poor navigation, insufficient or completely lacking information, no working code samples, those are all things that make a bad developer experience. And this is where developer portals step in as a potential solution. So what is a developer portal? It's a self-service hub that contains all the resources that developers might need to understand and work with a product. You can also extend this concept to include end user documentation, such as user guides, you know, your regular user manuals, and then you can just call it a documentation portal. But the basic idea is the same, it's a landing page it's a complete information architecture that's designed to support your documentation. And then by extension, your product and your whole community. So uh, when you're building a developer portal, you're gathering all this shared knowledge in one place. And this is, uh, this is important because it becomes a place where developers start to build their own things based on your technology. It's also important because it's a place where businesses, you know, corporations uh, start to see how they can make use of your technology and if we want KD to be successful and work with um, you know, big businesses, uh, we should start building a developer portal because it, it, it has a major influence on people who interact with your, uh, with your product. It's very important to get it right. So how do we get it right? Um, these will be some essentials that um, every developer portal should, should have. So it's search. We have a search function, basically you're telling developers Here's how you can find whatever you need. Uh, you need working code examples, obviously, so that they can start working with your software, with your technology immediately. So you, you're telling them, here's how you can start building your own thing. Um, you also need full references. If you have APIs, always have a full API reference on your developer portal. So that's like telling them, here's everything we have. And um, you need some kind of human contact information uh, whether it's a link to a mailing list or um, telegram group or whatever, just to show them here's how you can find help if you get stuck. It's also extremely important to have different types of documentation to accommodate developers on different parts of the developer journey. So for example, there's a saying that 
a getting started dog should get you from negative 10 to 100, where negative 10 is a person who doesn't know anything about your code or your product. But if you have only those guides and you don't have anything for people who are, for example, at 8 or 80 out of 100, so they know a lot of things, but there's some key missing parts. If you don't have uh, resources to support them, you're losing a, quite a bit of a chunk of your potential developer community. So um, obviously when you try to build something like this, you want to know what's in it for you. So what do you get from it? So some things that this could help with are onboarding, for example. We talk a lot about onboarding uh, in this community and it's obviously very important. So this could make it easier. We could have, you know, instead of digging through code and sending people thousands of links, you just send them one link to this developer portal where they can find everything. And um, when documentation is scattered around, it causes confusion for people who are new, obviously. Uh, so you can always tell them to just Google it, but when you say something like this to a person who is new to a community, it doesn't really leave a nice impression. So, you know, better to avoid it. <laughs> it also uh, reduces, um, Time to hello world, which is an actual metric that is used to measure efficiency of documentation. So how fast can a person start building their own hello world application immediately after uh, reading your docs? When people read the docs, they usually do it because they have some kind of a problem or they're frustrated, they are trying to solve it quickly, so they don't really have time to read through very long, detailed explanations. So you know, you have to accommodate for this. They also scan instead of reading, so the layout of your portal should, should accommodate uh, scanning first, right? So um, what else? The existence of a developer portal uh, is actually a major trust signal in itself, and the more information you add to it, uh, the stronger your trust signals are. So what this means? It means that you're sending a message to potential new developers that this project, you know, it's growing, code is being maintained, there are licenses in place, um, all developer journey stages are addressed, whether you're a beginner or someone who's already experienced, you always have a place to start working on something. And you know, there's, there's enough contact information on the portal so they know that there's actually live people who are currently working on this. It's not a dead project or anything like this. Um, you also target a very different audiences when you have such, um, such a variety of content. And it helps also to, um, to optimize for search engines, for example. When you have all the documentation in one place, it's easier to optimize this one page than three different pages in three different places. Um, so you can also target developers from other communities or as we said, from businesses um, who want to integrate with your, with your technology. Um, it also increases visibility uh, among um, members of other communities and it's, it's an opportunity to showcase your software projects in a different way than you would usually do. So you can say, we usually promote software to users as, you know, this is Dolphin, our file manager, you can share files here. But uh, on the developer portal, you can give more um, prominence to some developer-related features. You can tell them how to build integrations with uh, different, for example, file sharing services or stuff like that. So you can also use this portal as a whole to improve the image of your community as one that's very easy to work with because you have all these resources in one place and they're they are easy to find. Because uh, in promo we see people online all the time, they're asking how do we start contributing to KDE, where do we start? So if we have a good answer to this, it will be a lot easier to convince those people to, to actually join us. So um, let's look at a few examples of developer portals that actually exist in other free and open source software community, so this is Fedora. So as you can see, they have actually some really nice um, calls to action immediately on this page. They give you um, links to tools and um, resources to help you, help you start developing basically immediately. So they're, um, they're aiming to reduce this time to hello world that we mentioned. Uh, Gnome has a very simple one but again, also has all the essential information on it. It has some useful links. It has the link to the full API reference, which we said uh, was very important. And they also have an interesting thing uh, right at the top. It's not very visible, but they let you switch contexts quickly. So you can switch between developer and user documentation on the same page, which can be uh, helpful, actually. 
And then this is a Snapcraft. I'm not sure if you can see it at snapcraft.io for building snaps, right? They have this really, really cool thing that developers, I've heard, appreciate a lot, which is code examples in a bunch of different programming languages. So this can be extremely helpful. And if it applies to your technology or to your project, it's really good to have this. So what do we have in KDE? So how does it look like when someone joins and needs documentation? Well, our problem, from the way I see it, is that it's all scattered everywhere. It's very decentralized. It's not a huge problem, but it's still something that we could maybe optimize and do better. And a developer portal could be a way to solve this. It's not the only solution, but it's, it's a good start. This is how people feel when you tell them things like this, when you give them a bunch of links and then they, they don't know where to start. So how do we fix this? Well, um, we could have an approach that combines a centralized and decentralized um, approaches to, to develop a portal. So if our documentation is already decentralized, we don't have to move it all to one place immediately. We can just build one landing page that will connect them all. So in this way, we'll kind of mask the complexity that we have, um, and we will um, still have this one central place that we can use for search and for highlighting um, different types of documentation. So yes, yeah, so we have this docs.kd.org, which has some problems. For example, search. Can you find a search on this page? It's very small. It's very like up in the corner, and it should be front and center. And also, when you have to explain the navigation on the page, that means the navigation is not really that great, is it? So yeah, this is something that we could improve. And I already know that there are projects working on this. I think Carl Chuang, who maybe not here, not, not sure. Yeah, you're there. So he has plans for improving this, so that's great. Uh, we have this also, which is kind of better than the previous one, this is wiki.kd.org, so it has like some semblance of what a developer portal could be, but it has this weird mission statement thing at the top, which is like a weird flex, but okay. Um, it's, yeah, so we, could, we definitely could work on this to, to make it better. So it's, yeah, it's not great, it's not terrible. There's always room for improvement. So how to fix any documentation. If you have any documentation, this is how you can fix it, which is basically repeat what I said at, at the beginning, so you need a better search, you need better navigation, you always need code examples. When you're writing for developers, the first thing they want is always code examples. And yeah, definitely make it look modern. When I say that, uh, I mean don't leave pages outdated the same way they looked, you know, in the beginning of the 2000s, because that kind of sends a bad trust signal. It, it doesn't, um, it makes the site look untrustworthy, basically, because it, um, it's not immediately obvious to the person who is visiting it for the first time, that it's actually being developed, uh, developed and maintained. So try to work on that. So yeah, um, I think I'm almost out of time. So if you think that the KD community needs um, a developer portal here, are some things that you could do or you could start doing. So we could build a centralized index or a catalog or however you want to call it of all KD documentation. And we could have a search that will use whatever backend we want to use in, in, in the background to, to actually search through everything. Or we could start small. You could take your own project, whichever one that is, and you know motivate people to actually start improving the docs based on some of the things we mentioned before. So more code samples, uh, different types of documentation, different types of guides, right? Ones for getting started, ones for doing more. If you don't have a detailed API reference, do include it. Um, definitely keep working on documentation. I think now is kind of the right time to do it in this community because there's already been so much work done on it, as you probably heard in um, previous talks today during um, the goal discussion. Uh, good thing about documentation is that it fits into every goal because you know better documentation is always a good thing to have. So whichever goal you're working on or trying to contribute to, documentation will always fit into it. So try to do that. Um, it's also cool to think about options um, such as documentation sprints or hackathons where people get together and instead of coding as you do, they would actually work just on documentation. Or you could maybe have something like an indexing police. I couldn't think of a better name for this, but it would be um, a group of contributors who don't even have to be, uh, don't have to need, have some special technical knowledge. They just need to be able to observe 
links that are broken or things that are not indexed properly, and they would just report a list of things that are not linked or things that are missing from documentation. They would report this to you, and then you can start working on it in more detail. And if you want to see some really good examples of developer portals, you can go to devportalaward.org. Uh, that's a site that um, every year, well, I think since last year, they nominate and award uh, different developer portals in different categories. So you could get a lot of inspiration from there. And yeah, definitely keep working on docs. And if you want to talk more about this, uh, reach out to me. Thank you for all listening. I don't know if we have time for questions. Probably not. But if anyone yeah, maybe. Wants to... um raise the next speaker so you can set up and maybe if there's a question you can answer this while Ray connects his computer. Yeah? There are some questions. Okay. Hi, Vanna. Thanks for Hi. a great suggestion. Uh, just a suggestion. Are you tracking this effort somewhere? Maybe start a fabricator task or something so people could join in and uh, I haven't started anything yet. This was just an idea, but if you think it's worth uh, starting an initiative, I think we could do it. Yeah. I think it's definitely worth it. So yeah, go for okay. it. Okay. So one of the four basic principles of agile development is quote, we value working code over documentation. In other words, the best code documents itself. So what's your take on that? Oh, I've heard <laughs> that. I've heard that a lot. And in my workplace, a lot of people subscribe, like subscribe to that. You, you advocate entirely different approach. I'm, I'm not telling you like which of those approaches I, I like best, but like how, how does it square? Is it, is it like entirely orthogonal to this like working, working code over documentation or can those two principles somehow complement each other? Well, I think you need some kind of documentation for people who are starting at least. So you, you need to know how to start to work with something, and then you can only start understanding the code, I think. Uh, do you expect um, newcomers to start reading the code immediately and not the docs? I'm not sure if I get your question. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think the, um, um, the thing you mentioned is completely, completely at odds. Uh -huh, true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But then again, there's a lot who don't. So I guess it depends on, on the industry or the approach. I personally mm -hmm. think that you always need some kind of documentation, at least something basic. And then it all depends on what, what you're aiming for. You don't really need a developer portal if you don't want to attract developers. It's like as simple as that. But if we do want to grow as a community and there's already so much invested in this, I think this could be a way forward, but it doesn't have to be, right?